In this video, we're going to look at some applications or some uh, word problems involving quadratics, specifically vertex form. So this one says you hit a golf ball off the ground. Uh, the ball follows a parabolic flight path, uh, meaning it's a quadratic, and it reaches a maximum height of 4 feet. It hit the ground after 10 total seconds. How high was the ball after 3 seconds? So I look at a problem like this, I like to picture what's happening. So let's say we've got our ball on the ground right here, and uh, if you want, we can have like a a y-axis and an x-axis, okay? So we're starting at 0, 0, okay? Um, you're hitting the ball and it rises for a while, hits a peak, and then it lands, and it says it, it lands after 10 seconds. So this is the order pair 10 comma 0, because we're using our x-axis as time and our y-axis as height. We're looking at the height as a function of time. Now, it tells us what this maximum point is right here. It says it reaches a maximum height of four feet. Now, the question is, when does it hit four feet? So if I take the order pair, it's something comma four. Four is like the y value there, because y is our height. So the question is, what is here? And we're saying, one thing that we need to know about parabolas is that they are symmetrical. I Meaning if this thing flew, hit a peak, and then landed after 10 seconds, that means it must have been at its highest at five seconds. So just by interpreting what's going on in this word problem, what we figured out is we figured out three points on our graph. We have the point um, zero, zero, which is like an initial point. We have the point 10, zero, which is where it lands. And then we have the point five, four, where it's at its max. Now, the only thing is what we're trying to figure out here is we're trying to figure out this point right here, which is three comma something, which is going to be what is the height after three seconds. Now, Let's take all this and let's uh, make it happen. Let's do some math, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my vertex form. Y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Now, there's a few different ways of solving this. Um, I'm going to focus on using vertex form because that's what I've kind of used in all these videos. And so we're given our vertex. Our vertex is the order pair 5, 4. So let's just kind of substitute that in. And then we've got a positive 4, okay, um, being color-coded here. Now, one thing is we don't really know uh, what that A value is. We don't know the stretch, but we do know other points in line. I have the order pair 10, 0, and I have the order pair 0, 0. It honestly doesn't really matter um, which one we use here, okay? But I'm going to use 10, 0. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that 10 in for X and the 0 in for Y, okay? The 10 is going to go in for X and the 0 is going to go in for Y. So by substituting that 0, we have equals a times, and we got 10 minus 5 squared plus 4. Now let's do some algebra and let's solve for our a value because once we have that a value, we'll have everything we need to know in this situation. So um, let's see, I have 0 equals a times 5 squared because all that becomes 5 plus 4. Now I'll do a little more simplification. 5 squared is 25, so I could write that as 25a plus 4. Now let's solve for a. I'm going to subtract 4 on each side of my equation, and I'm going to divide by 25 on each side of my equation. So we have this a value of negative 4 25ths. So I'm going to come up here and say, okay, well here's our final equation that's describing the situation. We have y equals negative 4 25ths, times x minus 5 squared plus 4. So we have the 5 and the 4 from our given vertex, and we have the a value that we solve for. Now, the only thing it says is what, how high was the ball after 3 seconds? In other words, what is y when x is 3? And hopefully you're thinking, well, all we got to do is we got to put in 3 for x and work it out. So let's do that real quick. So if I have y equals negative 4 25ths, and then we're substituting in our 3. We just got to do some math here. So y equals negative 4 over 25. Um, to save time, 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And negative 2 squared is, is negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. So all of this right here, including the exponent, becomes this. So i got to multiply these two. This is really a 4 over 1. So when I multiply straight across, we have negative 16 over 25 plus 4. 
And so all I got to do now is I got to combine those two like terms. And whenever I do that, I'm going to have negative 16 over 25 plus um, 100 over 25. I guess I can kind of do the aside work over here. Negative 16 over 25 plus 100 over 25. All I've done here is I've rewritten the 4 with a denominator of 25. And now I'm going to add those two. And it looks like once I add those numerators, it's going to be 84 over 25. And, and since leaving that as an improper fraction doesn't really make sense in our context, um, I'm just going to write 84 over 25 in my calculator, and that's going to be um, 3.36, and it looks like we're in terms of feet. That means that this ordered pair, after 3 seconds, it has a height of 3.36 feet. Now I've got one more example. Um, it says if an object is launched from the ground level at an initial velocity of 32 feet per second, then the height after t seconds is given by this function. For how long will it take the object to get to its maximum height? Oh, find how long, that's why there's not a question mark. And what is the maximum height? So once again, several different ways of doing this, but I'm gonna do it in a way that uses a uh, vertex form. So I'm gonna start by trying to write this in vertex form. So whenever I do that, um, I like to factor out that leading coefficient. And if I factor out a negative 16 out of both of those terms, it looks like that's gonna make that a negative 2t. And what we gotta figure out is what's this number that we're gonna add right there that will make this a perfect square trinomial. And so um, if I'm looking at this, it looks like I'm gonna take the negative 2 I'm going to divide it by 2 to get negative 1, and I'm going to square negative 1 to get a positive 1. So I added a 1. Now what you got to be careful about is, is you might say, okay, well, if you added a 1 there, you got to subtract 1 out here to make sure that you're really adding a 0. But what we have to be careful is it looks like I added a 1 there, but I really added a negative 16 times 1. So this is really, I'm going to write, this is really a negative 16. So in, so in order to do that, what we have to do to kind of zero it out is we have to add 16 outside of our parentheses. And now let's simplify. Let's see what we got. We have negative 16 t squared minus 2t plus 1 plus 16. And then the whole reason I did that is so I could write this as a perfect square trinomial. And we are here, Okay. I've, I've written my perfect square trinomial as its factors, and we have this quadratic in vertex form, which is really the same thing as this, it just looks a little bit different. Now, the great thing about this is if I can really uh, interpret what vertex form is saying, then I already have enough to answer this question. So basically, let's picture what's happening over here. Now, I didn't give myself a graph template, but let's just kind of picture what's going on and bear with me, okay? What this is telling us is this is telling us that our vertex is hk. In other words, our vertex is going to be the ordered pair 1, 16. Vertex is the ordered pair 1, 16. So if I labeled that point, assume I have a scale 1, 16, and we also know that our parabola opens downwards because this is negative, okay? And we also know it was launched at 0, 0, so we kind of have all this stuff working for us. Okay, And so what that means is 1 is our x value, 16 is our y value, or excuse me, I shouldn't say x, I should say t, and 16 is our f of t, which t is, or t is time, and 16 is the height. So to answer these questions, find how long it takes the object to get to its maximum height, the answer to that question is it takes one second. What is the maximum height? 16 feet. Okay, so by taking this quadratic and writing it in vertex form, we can answer some questions about what's happening here.